What's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about how options are priced out and what factors I have to always be aware of before entering a trade to decide if I'm paying a good option premium based on my own trading strategy. Now in trading options, you could be right on the direction of the underlying stock, whether it be down or up. However, if you don't trade the correct option contracts, you may be susceptible to losing on the trade based off of the three main factors that we're gonna go over in this video. It's gonna be very insightful and there's gonna be a lot of gems in here, so make sure to stick around. And if you want a very good trading resource, I suggest you to follow my Instagram. I post daily trading recaps on here along with very good trading tips and tricks. The link to this will be in the description below. You're definitely missing out if you aren't following it. And this is gonna bring me into my first point of this video. I posted this last week. These are the three most important factors that influence the price of an option. The first one we are gonna go over is volatility. And this is key. We were first gonna go over implied volatility, but the way I look at volatility is a little different. Um, implied volatility is very important for different trading strategies, but majority of my trades are scalps, whether it be a quick you know, three, four minute type of trade, or whether it be a trend trade where I'm just buying at demand and selling at supply, volatility is key. It's the number one most important factor regarding price and volume. So people understand implied volatility, which essentially just gauges the likelihood of change in the underlying um, asset. So if we pull up the option chain here, um, we could see a couple things. I go over this in my ADC course about the option chain and how to navigate it. But briefly, we do have expirations. We're gonna get into that a little um, later. We do have days to expiration, but all the way to the right, right here, we have implied volatility, which is very important, and we're gonna see different numbers. So what this number means is basically the risk that the market anticipates. So it anticipates a 27%, and it anticipates on Amazon that we're gonna move 81 points this week above or below. So implied volatility on this is a little low but it affects that in the premiums so we pull this back up again the greater the volatility the greater the implied volatility the greater the range of the underlying equity so if we have a stock let's just say for example netflix in this case which reports earnings tomorrow usually around earnings implied volatility is a little higher because the uh, options, the market is anticipating a little more risk around earnings, which is going to lead to higher volatility, which higher volatility is going to lead into greater price movements. And when we have greater price movements, the intrinsic value of the option, the probability of an increasing is much higher. So because Netflix does have earnings, we have contracts which are at the money, you know, even in the money are around 18, 19 bucks, which is a little expensive but it's validated because we have a 74% implied volatility and a move of above or below 37 points you know, for this week due to the earnings announcements. If we go to a stock like Apple, which does not have any economic factors, it doesn't have um, earnings, we could go to the options and you could see these contracts that are in the money or one at the money um, are $1.70, $2, whereas the implied move is around $3 and a 31% implied volatility. So around earnings, the IVs get um, inflated a little bit because they're expecting higher volatility. The greater the volatility, the greater the probability of the intrinsic value increasing. So how I personally use options is you looking at the underlying volatility rather than the implied volatility that the option market is presenting us. As day traders, as scalpers, even swing traders, you need volatility because what volatility brings is momentum. So when we have volatility, we have momentum. And when we have momentum, we have great price swings. And for us momentum and scalper traders, uh, we need that to get in and out with liquidity. So my rule of thumb is if there's no momentum, if there's no volatility, there's no trade for me, especially with trading options. The greater the volatility, the greater the price range of the underlying equity, and the better off we're gonna be. Personally, based off my strategy, I'm not really too concerned with IV. Those are more important for credit strategies where you're writing options, but for how I trade, IV is not very important. 
it's important to be aware of, but it doesn't really affect my decisions. I may just have to pay a little bit more of a premium. I'm just concerned with the volatility in the underlying. For example, here we have Amazon, which from the pre-market plan today, bounced off of this demand zone around 3379. So the idea is you want to play calls inside of demand, take profit at supply or at resistance. So this had a very volatile uh, move. Volatile does not mean volume. However, more volume does confirm more volatility. But I essentially want to see greater price swings as we did bounce off of this 3380 demand zone and did have a very aggressive and strong push up about 40 points in four minutes. And if that doesn't scream volatility to you, I don't know what does. And if we were to look at the option contracts for us traders, again, Amazon, I think, had a 77% implied volatility. So the premiums, you are going to have to pay a little higher uh, cost. So these were around, you know, 32 bucks at the low at demand. If you were to get long, let's just say around 3394, you would have paid about $40. So one contract um, would have costed you $4,000. But if you did ride this up to demand, let's just say the high in this case at resistance where the high was put in and we stalled out here and sold off $40 to around $64 would have yielded you a $2,400 profit from a $4,000 investment. But that is the move you want to see. See thick bodied candles, you see volume, you see volatility, and you see clean price action. So that's what I mean with volatility. And for a scalper or a day trader, that is a perfect condition that you want to be an active participant in. I don't care if a stock is moving up or down. If there isn't volatility backing it, the quality of setup to me becomes much lower because this was a very clean move on the option right here to the right. These are Amazon 3,400 calls. And on the left right here is Amazon stock. Now, let's just hypothetically speaking, we took puts. So I'm going to load up the 3,400 puts here instead of calls. And let's say we shorted this failed resistance break. We also had confirmation once we came into supply. And again, the idea is you want to short supply. Um, so as soon as we broke down, we did fail this resistance point. Let's look at Amazon put contracts. So prior to the sell off when we were chopping inside of supply, you can see how choppy the option contracts were. And if there's not volatility in the underlying, depending on the type of direction you're looking to play, you see the price movement here on um, Amazon's 3,400 puts. But as soon as we started seeing volume and momentum with volatility come to the downside for the puts after we did reject supply, that could have been a valid point for you to get short and you could have capitalized because look what happened on these option contracts. These went from around 29 cents uh, at 10.02, whereas this is the 10.02 candle right here from 29 cents all the way to high of 52 cents. So this could have costed you around three grand and you could have made around $2,200 profit, obviously from low to high. Then we come into demand and look at how the volatility absolutely diminished compared to what we saw earlier in the day. Very strong move up, very strong move down. Now we come back to this demand zone and we do bounce for about 10 points. However, there's no volatility backing this move. So if I were to pull up the 3,400 calls again, and let's just go to that time. We did have a volume spike here, but that's kind of irrelevant. So this is at the time I could actually synchronize my crosshairs so you could see them at the same exact point. So right here, when Amazon did bounce off of demand, these were going for about 33 cents. By the time we got in, 35 cents. And these went to a high of 39 cents. So only $400 on one contract, even though we did bounce off of demand for about 15 points. But due to the lack of volatility, these did not move as expected and as like we saw you know, earlier in the day. Same thing on QQQ today. Um, I posted this in the pre-market plan. I chart the NASDAQ future, forward slash NQ, and I'll trade QQQ options off of it. So we were bearish. We wanted to play puts or short below the 340.32, which translated to um, 13950 on NASDAQ future. So if I pull this up, we wanted to short below this in the first half hour of the market open, besides the first five minutes, it was consolidating. We were very choppy and choppy means no momentum and no momentum means no volume. 
So then we started selling off and this is where momentum started building at the same time the S&P 500 started selling off. So we finally got below that short uh, line at 340.32. And if I were to pull up the puts, look how clean this option chart is. So let's say we waited to short below uh, 340 where my cursors are all synced up at. These went from 280 and our nearest demand zone which finally triggered near there. But let's just say we sold five minutes later from 280 to around 340. So about six, 60 cents on 10 contracts, that's 600 bucks um, on a $3,000, uh, $2,800 investment. So because of that clean volatile, volatile move on the underlying, look how clean these options moved on the right. Uh, same thing when we sold off here and they pulled the rug on the market. Look how these exploded. We have volume to confirm it and we have strong clean movement on the underlying. Now we did bounce off of demand. This was the zone we were watching. So if I pull up the um, 340 calls for today's or for this week's expiration on QQQ, let me make this a C. Look what happens when we bounce off of demand. Now this was a pretty clean move um, right here. The option contracts were not the smoothest. However, we did bounce off of the 337.93 cent mark. Nice volume to confirm it. And these went from 211 to 295 for about a 40% return uh, if we were to scale out at VWAP. But this is the clean movement you wanna see because we know the underlyings will respect it. I'm not too concerned about IV. This is how I decide and look at volatility. So the next major point is time. And this one is very important because like I said, you could be correct on the direction of the stock. However, if time is not in your favor, as options do expire, you may lose on the contracts. You may lose premium because you didn't trade the correct ones. So as you know, options have an expiration to meet a certain criteria at or before a certain time. Um, so options expire every Friday. And if you're trading some ETFs like SPY, uh, they expire Monday, Wednesday, Friday. However, normal equities like Apple, Amazon, uh, Boeing, stuff like that expire on every Friday. So if you're talking about Monday, that means you have four days till expiration. Uh, as you can see here on the option chain, we have Apple contracts. These expire on the 23rd of April. The day I'm recording this is April 19th. And these have four days to expiration. The ones below it expire next Friday, April 30th, and those have 11 days to expiration. So the closer we get to expiration and the contracts which have zero intrinsic value are going to be much cheaper because what that means is you have to look at options as a bet. The longer the lifespan means the more time those options have to fulfill the bet, which means a higher probability of the intrinsic value increasing by the time of expiration. For example, the supply and demand on uh, QQQ. Let's just act like today was Friday and we're playing the 340 calls, uh, which our strike price is all the way up here. I'm long at demand. It's Friday. We have about two hours before the market closes. And these contracts, anything below the strike of 340 will be worthless. They'll have zero intrinsic value. If I see this chop like this, I know I do not have time in my favor because I know these expire in a couple of minutes and we would have to make a crazy move for those contracts to be worth something. So because of this sideways chop, we are going to see the contracts decrease in value, even though we may be moving up, but because we don't have time on our side. So time is very important. Monday through Wednesday, uh, you should be good on the same week. Thursday through Friday, you have to be a little cautious about it. Um, depending on the type of trade you're looking to put on, you have to always understand you know, the type of setup, uh, whether you're long and at demand, if you're scalping. I talk about this in the course as well, uh, based off of my supply and demand, price imbalance trading strategy. Then the last point is the strike price versus underlying price. This is very important. Uh, this has to do with Delta and Option Greek. Uh, so out of the money contracts have little value uh, because it's very unlikely the underlying will move to that strike price or that bet price by expiration. So it's very important for you to be trading not so far out of the money.
For example, if we're looking to buy, uh, let's go to Apple's chart. Oh, let's go to QQQ actually. So let's say we were trying to long at demand. It's fr it's Friday, let's call it. Options are at demand around 337 bucks. And we buy, let's say the 345 calls way up there because they're so cheap. So let's go to the option chain. 345 calls are 50 cents. It would cost us 50 bucks per contract. But because we want to be cheap and buy, you know, an option that's relatively uh, a little less expensive. Now these are so far out of the money. These would have to go in the money for have any intrinsic value. And as the ticking time bomb of time by expiration keeps going down and the stock not moving in that direction, these are just going to decrease in value as well. So it's always safe to play at the money, uh, maybe one out the money, but you don't want to go too far out of the money. You want to focus on a specific delta uh, because if you buy, you know, way out of the money, the value is just going to decrease as the probability of it moving in the money uh, is, you know, slimmer the further you go out of the money for calls and puts. So this was just a brief video. I hope you all did learn something from it. If you did, subscribe, drop a like. If you want to learn more other than this video, be sure to check out my course that I offer. It's currently discounted by 100 bucks. You can learn everything and you'll have access to my Discord room. But besides that, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for tuning in and peace.